Multiply a binomial times a trinomial? All right, let's do it. Notice when I distributed b into the trinomial, I wrote the factors in alphabetical order. Now let's go through and simplify. Remember, we can add like terms. Well, those two add out to zero, and those add out to zero. What am I left with? a cubed plus b cubed? Hmm, what do you think is going to happen on the next one? Let's see. You probably had a good guess on this one. Now it's a cubed minus b cubed. How can we use this to learn to factor a sum and difference of cubes? Let's look at the pattern. So if I have a cubed plus b cubed, we know it'll be a binomial times a trinomial. Then we just have to figure out what signs go in the binomial and trinomial. From above, I know it's a plus and then a minus and a plus. I wish we had a good way to remember how to put the signs. Let's see, we started with a plus. Well, this is a plus, so same. Then it goes minus, oh, opposite. Hmm, and that's positive. And did you notice that it's positive here as well? Hmm. It seems like soap. Hmm, the factoring method of 2020. Let's take a look at a cubed minus b cubed. Noticing that we had a minus and then a plus and a plus. So minus and then a positive and a positive, a plus and a plus. Well, that once again is same, opposite. Huh, always positive. <laughs> I feel like it's so. Once we have the binomial and trinomial and we set up the signs, then let's do the pattern. So I have A and B, and then to get the trinomial, I take the first part squared, I multiply together A times B, and the last part squared, B squared. Same on A cubed minus B cubed, right? First A and then last B, and how do I get the trinomial? First squared, multiply together, last squared. All right, so let's try this with x cubed minus 27. All right, well, my a term would just be x cubed, and my b term would be, okay, what cubed is 27? Three cubed. Binomial, trinomials, I start to factor. Same, opposite, always positive. Okay, now that I have my setup, first term, last term, so x minus three. First term squared, x squared. First term times last term, three x, x times three. And then last term squared, so three squared is nine. I'm gonna make sure I write it as nine, not three squared. There we go, we have a nice factor difference of cubes. Now I know if you look at this x squared plus three x plus nine, I see a quadratic there and I'm like, hmm, maybe I could still factor that. Well, multiplies to nine and adds to three. Nothing multiplies to nine and adds to three. So this is officially fully factored. I can't factor it any further. So let's try this process again. X cubed plus 216. Oh, it might be helpful to have a list of perfect cubes. Take a minute, 30 seconds maybe. Write down as many perfect cubes as you know. Well, it looks like six cubed is 216. So I can write this as X cubed plus six cubed equals, and now I got my binomial trinomial, being sure I say that, same opposite always positive for my signs. Go factor it. So x plus six times x squared minus six x plus 36. Again, that trinomial is not going to factor any further, so this is my official factored form. Feels like we're getting the hang of this, doesn't it? But look at number three. This one has 27 x cubed plus 125. Well, I know 27 is three cubed and 125 is five cubed, but can we get it into that a cubed plus b cubed format? <laughs> to be very clear, I wrote three x in parentheses quantity cubed. So that first term in my binomial will be a three x. Okay, remember the process. Repeat it so you get it stuck in your head. Binomial, trinomial, and then soap it, right? Soap means what are the signs? Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. After I have that, three x and five, first term squared, be careful, first term squared, three squared, x squared. So nine x squared. Multiply together, five times three x, 15 x. And last term squared, five times five, 25. 
Number four has me scared. Not really. It has an X in it and a Y in it. It's okay, they're both cubes. And 343, whew, I'm glad we did that list. So that's seven cubed, X cubed, minus six cubed, Y cubed. That means the A term will be seven X, and the B term will be 6y. Alrighty, what do we do now? Binomial, trinomial, soap it, go. That didn't turn out so bad, just so long as we follow that format, right? Binomial, trinomial, same, opposite, always positive. First term, second term, and then first term squared, multiply together, last term squared. Oh, looking at number five, I have that negative first term. That's a little different than the other ones. So maybe on this one, I could start strong, factor out that negative sign, and then start using soap. All right, so now that I factored out that negative one, I've got x cubed plus 216. Huh, we already did that one in number two. All right, so I've got negative x plus six, x squared minus six x plus 36. The only thing we have to really be careful about in this problem is to not drop that negative one. To not drop that negative one. All right, as we look at number six, 54 x to the fourth plus 250 x. Whoa, I've got a quartic binomial here. So quartic, ooh, what am I gonna do? I don't know how to factor quartics yet. Start strong, start strong. Look, both terms have an X in them, so I can factor out an X. Does anything else factor out? 54 and 250. They're both even, so they're divisible by two. Well, it's a good thing I pulled out a GCF here because now I have 27X cubed plus 125 as my binomial, and those are both perfect cubes. So take a minute, try to factor what's left. All right, check your factored form. Make sure you didn't drop that 2x and really check your trinomial. Do you have 9x squared minus 15x plus 25? Factoring polynomials, let's get cracking.